Hello and welcome to this a Actor Thomas video with me, Actor Thomas. Now today we are going to be doing a facts and date video of a member of the royal family. Today we are going to be doing Princess Augusta Sophia of the United Kingdom. And now she was the uh, sixth daughter, no, the sixth child and the second daughter of uh, King George III and his wife, Queen Caroline. And she was born in the November of uh, 1786 and she uh, joined her ever-growing family which consisted of her brothers and sisters um, so you had George, Frederick, uh, William, uh, Caroline and Edward and obviously after her bar over the, the next few years, of course, more and more children uh, came along. Now, um, within one month of her birth, she was um, christened by the uh, then Archbishop of Canterbury. Now, um, like I said, one, uh, two years later, uh, her sister Princess Elizabeth was born. And it's this is where the... Um, the crucial thing happens because with her elder sister, um, Princess Caroline, uh, the Princess Royal, with uh, Princess Augusta Sophia and Princess Elizabeth, they became known as the Three Princesses. Um, and because they were relatively similar ages, they were uh, raised by the same nannies and taught by the same tutors. And as they grew up, they uh, became very close and they uh, they had like I say the same tutors who would transfer them from Buckingham House which was the family home to um, over to um, Crewe Palace which is where all of their um, education was taking place so every day a carriage ride would take them over there and they would have full day's lessons and returning in the evening and um, like most ladies at the time, they were taught the most simplest, and most feminine of um, lessons to, um, for ladies to be able to um, survive in a um, in a royal court, such as art, music, a um, little bit of politics, and generally things like that, just so they can. Um, hold their own and it's not as if they're going to be sitting there being completely bored senseless because at least in any situation they will be able to have an opinion on something uh, which may have been discussed which for both of her, their uh, for both of her parents uh, the king and queen this was very important for their daughters uh, because George his family particularly his sisters had been raised and um, he was very aware of the fact that in their marriages, they were seen as the silent um, part and they should not have opinions on anything. They should be um, left to left alone and not have be able to, you know, if, you, if they were asked a question, they shouldn't be able to know the answer. Things like politics and things like that should be kept away from women. And George himself believed that to be completely incorrect, so he... Um, he, uh, he 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 wanted his daughters to have the best education that at the time was available to them. So, um, moving from their education into their adolescence times and things like that, they um, the family kind of had grown, of course. But the older children, such as um, like the you know the the elder children, had moved off to either going to um, further education, such as or going into the military. And that was obviously that's what the that's what the boys did, and they uh, they, they 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 carried on doing that, and that, that that was something that they enjoyed. The princesses had to stay at home and accompany their parents, the king and queen. And this is where uh, things start to be. They the the the, the, the three princesses already always dress sort of similarly, and plus because they all sort of looked relatively similar they started um, dressing similarly like I said and also doing their hair similarly just in 
many historians have stated that they believe that would be almost like a coping mechanism that um this is a f you can see a you know there's three of them not just it's not just one single entity it's the three of them together they are facing whatever situation may be arising for them and um particularly for um sophia or um, augustus of sophia um i believe that is more important because she um spent so obviously because she never married and anything like that she um she did spend all of her life apart from her um relationships with um as an irish general she was alone and she only really the, her true companions really were her two sisters at that time and she kept that closeness with her sisters throughout the remainder of her life and even when they did move off over away to germany and things like that they you know they stayed in constant um, communication via letters which was very important and kept uh, that strong closeness of sisters there um another person that she kept very close in contact with 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 her brother prince william who uh, at that point around this point was over in hanover uh, in military training and at university at the same time and because the uh, the, fa the the parents weren't particularly they want you to their, their children to keep their uh, their minds on their education and things like that they they try not to divulge much information in letters about what's happening over over in the family in England so um William and the brothers received information from um Augusta Sophia about what was happening back at home and um so, like I say, that was kind of like a rather important p part of her life where she was building uh, th this, A, a close physical bond with her sisters because they were around her, but also a close letter-writing relationship with her brothers because of the fact that um, they were, you know, they were far away. And over the years, when those two things changed over, so when the uh, the men returned back to the UK and the ladies, the prince, sorry, the the sisters uh, moved away because of marriages, they um, that those relationships stayed strong, which was one thing that George and his wife Caroline both wanted for their families to be relatively cl close knit, um, not 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 necessarily kind of living together, but the fact that they. That they would always they would they would they would write letters to one another informing each other of what's going on and um offering support and help to one another when needed now um like i said earlier on the uh, one person that she supposedly ever truly loved was an irish general called uh, brett spencer i believe his name is and he is he, he was a uh, a, an, an army officer that was based over here in the, the UK in 1800 and between 1800 and 1803 uh, began a a relationship particularly obviously seeing him at court and her, him seeing her at court and little notes passed between them this uh, supposedly became quite a an intimate relationship from 19 uh, from 1803 and from 1803 until his death in 1828 they uh, it, it it was uh not known publicly but um it was kept very private but it seemed to have been a very intense relationship for the pair of them and there is um no official paperwork in relation to this relationship but it is said that when if he was away doing his military work, she she was uh, never herself. She was um, withdrawn. She was um, she, 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 she would she would hardly ever keep engagements, and she would become a, um, a a completely different person until he returns. And once he returned, then the old Augusta Sophia would come back, and she would be um, uh, always at engagements. 
and always the, uh, the, 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 the the sort of person that she was normally when he was around, which is a very happy um, lady who was, of course, in love. Like I say, unfortunately, he dies in 1828, but um, it's roughly around, um, kind of, the only other thing that, like I say, even though there's never any official marriage supposedly taking place, or there's no official records left to say the fact that they got married, um, there is a that there is something that some people have discovered, which is that um, a unofficial marriage took place with the um, where once she requested the uh, the permission from the then Prince Regent Prince George because of their father's um, ever deepening madness at that point and it's it was said that um, over in Germany they um, they went and had a um, some kind of marriage ceremony taking place and she believed herself to be married even though they uh, there was never any official um, consent granted from the, the king or anything like that or and the fact that there's no actual paperwork um, related to this but like I say she um, once the um, once he did die her she, she she carried on she carried on doing what she was doing you know being a part of the extended royal family and um, assisting her well particularly her two brothers when they were kings so George the fourth and William the fourth and then later on when her niece Queen Victoria takes over as queen um, the um, she was there particularly between from when she became queen to when the um, when Prince Albert ca uh, got came onto the scene she, uh, she her and her sisters were a, a supposedly great help to uh, Victoria especially with, with the strained relationship between Victoria and her own mother um, Victoria uh, as well as um, her her um, her governess um, the aunts became surrogates and they helped her um, through letters and just little bits of advice knowing how you know their um, especially her aunts how the um, how the K King George the third King George the fourth and William the fourth had ruled and letting her know their experiences um, like I say um, especially when and with the children when the ch when her and Albert when Victoria and Albert started having children um, until the until the relationship uh, came back onto a better footing with Queen Victoria's mother the aunts also gave advice there as well and it it also shows that they are a the, the, the family were there to support and help their um their their family member which i believe is quite um important that this happened um like i say um over the next over the last few years of her life she um she, she she stepped further and further back she was still a part of um official um court life of course but she um she, she would never go out and uh, make her um, opinions or beliefs open to uh, the general public. Uh, she would always um, bow down to the um, the line that was being put across by Parliament or her niece, the Queen Victoria. Unfortunately, uh, she herself dies in uh, 1840 in Clarence House, very close to Buckingham Palace. And um, she, uh, she, she, yeah, she's like, and then um, she lived, like I say, she, uh, she, her funeral happened and then she, she had a small um, laying in state ceremony before her funeral and then she's buried in St George's Chapel in Windsor. Um, like I say, she herself, even though she, um, she was aware of her position in life. She knew she was aware of the fact that she could be um, uh, 
very helpful and very beneficial to other members of her family and from what I've been able to read she was always willing to assist people and give advice to people that she could help and I believe that is one of the few things that um, helped her through her life was the fact that she always knew that she was never going to be a particularly high up royal but she was always aware of the fact that her in her the experiences that she'd had and the experiences of her family that she was aware of she could assist the next generation and that was another thing that she did so uh thank you very much for watching this video i hope you have enjoyed it i hope it's been beneficial for you <coughs> <coughs> oh. if it has please um oh fuck ah uh. If it has, please uh, leave a like and a subscribe down below. If you like, you can uh, leave a comment. And if you would like, you can become one of my... Uh, one of my... Um, fucking hell, what's it called? Fuck. One of my uh, patrons. The link to my Patreon page is uh, down below. And, um, like I say, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And I shall see you next time. Goodbye.